Hi everybody, this will be part two of the Twine Interactive tutorial series. Last video we talked about how to set up uh, a basic twine that has a couple pages, a couple of linear pages here, and then uh, one option of a nonlinear interactive page where you can choose between three different sub pages. Okay. Um, and we're hitting the play button here. We're working in the use it online version of Twine. Um, so that way uh, we don't have to download anything and it can all work in our web browser. I'm using Chrome uh, as a reminder. Everything will work properly in Chrome. Uh, may not run properly in other web browsers. So this video will talk about how to create uh, or use images uh, within Twine. Now if you use a download standalone application, there is a secondary way of actually importing in images. But if you're using the web version and you want to make sure that you're not, you don't have to host any images on your own site then you can just use these options that I'm going to show you in this video of finding an image online and finding a direct image link or uploading an image to something like Google Drive or a cloud network system uh, so that way you don't have to host it on your own website uh, you can host the images elsewhere like on Google Drive or find them online so uh, this first one, we're going to come in here and let's go to Ned. We'll go find a random image online that we'll use, like a cartoon version of a kid, uh, and we'll call that person uh, Ned. So uh, within Ned's code uh, page, uh, Ned's passage, we're going to put in code that allows us to find an image online and display that image within uh, this page. So first off, let's go find an image. So I'm going to go to a new tab and we'll go to... Uh, let's just type in cartoon kid. Okay, so we find an image. Uh, try to find one where I have the background. Okay, this one doesn't have a background. It's kind of interesting looking. So in order to use this properly, we need to find the direct image link, not the web page where this image is located. So we don't need to go to Pinterest or find the link there. Um, after you find an image through Google, if you right click, and choose open image in new tab. Okay, we need this direct link. Okay, so this is the direct link of that image. Hopefully this image will work, we'll see. Um, so I need that direct image link. So let's copy that. And then back in our twine, let's open up our net character passage. And we need to add some simple code here. Uh, so this is based off of HTML and cascading style sheets. So if you've done any work within HTML, some of this stuff should transfer over. If you've not done any HTML work, uh, you can follow this tutorial and use some of this basic code in order to get things interactive and using more complex things like images and text background color change and things like that. So what we need to use is, uh, it says this is Ned, we're gonna return down twice and then add our image of Ned here. Um, we're gonna use our angle brackets, which is shift comma and shift period. So our left angle bracket looks like this, and our right angle bracket looks like that. So in order to set up an image, uh, we are going to use the left angle bracket, and I'm gonna type in IMG for image, space SRC for source. So basically this means an image source, go find an image source. Uh, left angle bracket, IMG, space SRC, and hit the equal, uh, key and then here's where we are inserting our URL. So let's do control V. There you go. It might move things to a second line, but that's what that code should look like so far. And then we need a right angle bracket, so shift period. And that's our code. It should highlight it in a kind of bluish purple color to show that it is going to be an image or it's link in it. Um, but that's how we set up a uh, image that we just find online. Uh, through Google, copy that URL of the direct image link, place it with this code here. So let's back out and go hit play. So the story continues, click on Ned. All right, Ned's picture works well here. So one other thing that we can do um, is um, adjust the image width and height here. Um, so what if we want this image to be larger or smaller? Uh, what we can do is go back into our image code and within the angle brackets 
Okay, I'm gonna hit space bar and we'll type in width uh, equals in the quotation marks and we'll say 600. Okay, so let's try that. Width equals quotation mark 600 because that so that way it'll have 600 pixels for the width. Let's see if that increases it. There you go. So now when we refresh that page, I can close out of that one and hit play again. That image should be larger. Ned is much larger of an image. Now we don't want to scale it up too much because we are at the confinements of the resolution of that image but we can also go back into that and say 200. So we can make that image smaller. Whoop, there you go, so to reload that, hit play again and go back into that page. So Ned's image is much smaller. Okay. Now you can then add width and height, but this image is not a completely square image, it's wider than it is tall. So if I put width and height both to 400 or something like that, uh, it's going to convert the image to be a square image, so it's going to skew the image. So either you would change width or height, height, and say height to 600. Okay. Um, so now if I hit play, now that's going to make the character's height uh, axis 600 pixels high. Um, so that's one way that we can change an image. We can either do width or height and then increase or decrease that size. Uh, if you know your image is exactly the same dimensions on the width and height, then you can do width and height. But if you do width or height, it's just going to uh, uniformly scale the other axis up accordingly. All right, so uh, there's a couple of things we can do. What if we don't have that image available to us? Uh, what if we drawn it on our own or you wanted to make some adjustments to this image? Uh, we can come in here. Let's just close this out and uh, I've uploaded an image to Google Drive. Um, so let me pull my Google Drive over here. And Google Drive, let's see if I can find... We'll go ahead and do the girl cartoon. So here's my girl cartoon image. I've uploaded an image straight to Google Drive. You, know, you can log into Google Drive and then uh, upload an image. So this is for more custom images. What we have to do first is make sure that this image can be accessible with anyone with this link or whatnot. I don't want to allow people to edit it. I just want people to be able to view it. So in order to make an image available for us in Twine, we have to make sure this image is public. So after you drag an image or a file into Google Drive that you want to use with Twine, we're going to right click on that and go to Share. And then uh, we want to go down to advanced. And then we want to make sure this probably not going to say public. It's probably going to say like off or whatnot. Make sure this says on public on the web. Okay. Um, so that way it's public. Anyone that has this can um, uh, access this image. And we can choose done. All right. So that image that we're going to use in Twine needs to be a public image. So the next thing we're going to do is right click and choose get shareable link. Okay, that copies it to the clipboard. There it is. All right, so let me minimize that. So that was the girl character. So we'll go to Sally. We'll turn down a couple of times and we're going to use the same exact font uh, or code. We're going to do a left angle bracket ing space src for image source equal and we're going to uh, hit control V to paste our embedded link in here and then put a shift right angle bracket. Okay, so it's not actually gonna work right here because we need to look at the thumbnail and not the open version of it. Um, so we need to do the same code, but we're gonna change uh, one simple thing here. We're gonna change this from um, open to thumbnail, thumbnail. Okay. So where it says open in that Google Drive link, we're going to change that word open to thumbnail. All right, so let's close this out. Let's go hit play. Story continues. Let's go to Sally. There we go. So Sally image is working. If you don't change the open to thumbnail, the image will not load. So then we can come back and say, well, Sally's image is too small. I can go inside my angle bracket and do, uh, let's do height again, height equals 
quotation, and we'll do see what 600 looks like as well. Get out of that, go back and play. Back to Sally, that looks pretty good. So the image is a little pixelated because the original image was not meant to be this large. Uh, but uh, that's exactly how we can uh, do two different ways of importing an image into Twine. It's really just recalling the image of where it is online. Uh, this, go back to Ned's image. Ned's image is just the image randomly found online and the direct image link. Uh, Sally's image, I've uploaded this image to Google Drive. I've made sure that that image is public so anyone with it can view it. Uh, and then I've copied that code over here and just changed the word open to thumbnail and this image will work properly. So those are two major ways that we can use images to spice up our interactive media, uh, interactive story here. Images are a good way to uh, add visual connection to what the words that the passage is saying and also add more variety to what's going on in the story. So to wrap up this video, next video we'll talk about some other ways to refine and add more detail uh, with uh, Twine.